What's going on, man? This is uh, Big Ma. What's up, Facebook? I am coming to you live because we had a, a discussion earlier with um, entrepreneur Mr. Nathan Davis. And in that discussion, there was a, a small little debate between myself and Mr. Farouk Hunter around central, the centralization or the decentralization of um, M-Pesa. And if you don't know what M-Pesa is, M-Pesa is a uh, currency in... Uh-oh. M-Pesa is a currency in Kenya that is uh, governed by Safaricom, which is like their AT&T, that has basically allowed a lot of non-banked individuals to gain access to the economy um, because so. John, you have to get on your phone. You have to get on your phone to do this. Make sure you turn your phone to the side because I see that you're here. Um, so what I wanted to do is, and I was telling Farouk this, and if somebody could, please share this to a coin to for me. Um, thank you, Charlene. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so John, hop on your phone. Like, get on this live on your phone so you can jump in because I don't, you can't do it on your uh, computer. So um, John, Mr. John Wayana, Way, Wainana Samson Karanja is from... Um, Kenya, and he's one of the uh, preeminent Bitcoin um, individuals uh, there, intellectuals there in Kenya. Um, he's been in the Bitcoin space for a while. He helps out a lot with Bitmari, um, with Sinclair, um, Dr. Sinclair. So he is very awesome, and he uses BitPesa, but he also understands, um, thank you, Martin, but he also understands about Bitcoin. So when he gets, when we can get him back in on his phone, we're gonna have a discussion with him around uh, the idea of centralization versus decentralization. Um, it should be a very good and informative conversation for all those who want to stay on. Make sure you invite your friends, share it, everybody share it, send it where you need to share it to. Um, but I, I really think it's gonna be really awesome. Let me see if I if that's him. Yes, sir. There he goes. So hopefully we'll get him in here and we will talk about um, centralization versus decentralization and particularly particularly around M-Pesa, which is a currency that is basically an alternative currency that is used right now in Kenya. Um, and he might be coming live from Kenya, I would think. So I don't know what time it is there. I didn't check. I'm sorry if we're keeping you up too late, John. Um, but it's, it's trying to add him right now. So hopefully it'll add him here. It's saying adding. Hey John, what's up? So is it is it uh, giving you the ability to join? I click the add button. Let me see. This is why I love the internet, because we're about to go live with a gentleman who is, I think he's in Kenya right now. Um, John, let's see. I'm trying to add you again, John. If it doesn't work this time, you might have to close down your app and then jump back in again. So yeah, this will be a very interesting conversation. What's up, Leif? Um, yeah, we are, hopefully John can jump on. He's from Kenya, he uses their faces probably daily. Um, but he also is, a Bitcoin and blockchain intellectual. Um, let me see. I'm going to delete your request, John. Try to get back in. Try to get back in. Close your app, close it down, and then come back, and it may let, you, may let it work. Sometimes it's out of sync. There was somebody else trying to go live with me right now, Miss Jana Peak. Um, so we'll see what she says while we're waiting for John to come back. Yeah, so that was just, you know, was a, a small discussion earlier around the centralization of M Pesa. Um, I say that it is uh, centralized. Uh, Mr. Farouk was saying that it was peer to peer, but what I was talking about from a centralization standpoint, was, what's up, Leif? Uh, was around the ledger. Oh, what the, you requested to go on, Ms. Jenna. <laughs> so, 
Um, this, and basically what I was saying is, is that M-Pesa, Safaricom, it's a good system. It works well in that country. It's been going on for a while. Let's see. Here he comes. Please let this work. This dude is so brilliant. John's even setting up uh, lightning nodes in Kenya as we speak as well for the lightning network. Please come on, Facebook. It's trying to add you again, John. Dang it. He's hit me up in the messages. Let me see. Hey, he is my man. What's up, John? What's up, Lamar? How are you, brother? I am doing well, my brother, man. You're looking good as usual. Oh, thank you. You're looking good, too. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. So, yeah, look, man, um, we were having a conversation earlier, and we were talking about m -Pace, and I brought your name up because I was like, I just saw um, the m -Pace app on John's phone, what was it, three or four months ago? Yes, yes. Yeah, when we were in, in Tampa. Uh, Tampa. Yeah. yeah, in Tampa. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, talk about that, how m -Pace works, and then talk about that as juxtaposed to how Bitcoin works and how those two are different. So I'll let you take it away, man. You, you, you the man. All right, all right, all right. So uh, M-Pesa stands for mobile money. Uh, Pesa is money in Swahili. And it's a system that um, our version of at and uh, in Kenya called Safaricom set up uh, about 16 years ago. And it was the first uh, mobile uh, digital payments platform. And uh, basically, realized. No. It came back. Maybe somebody's contacting yeah. you. I was scared, man. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what, what Safaricom realized is a lot of Kenyans were sending um, airtime minutes to each other. And uh, uh, basically, uh, this was something that was strange to them because they could see, uh, you know, a lot of minutes circulating across the country. And, um, you know, in Kenya, when you buy airtime or when you buy telephone minutes, you pay as you go. It's not like in America where it's a postpaid service where you pay at the end of the month. Right. Yeah, so uh, basically... Um, when, when they realized that that was happening a lot, they decided to investigate and they did uh, a study um, and, and, and figured out that there was a potential for, for creating uh, digital money, uh, which, which became M-Pesa. And uh, the reason, um, a lot of uh, telcos, maybe a couple of them um, in, in Afghanistan, and uh, they were not able to succeed. Um, it was only in Kenya where it really, really took off. And right. the reason was a lot of uh, Kenyans who work in the cities or in the towns, they were sending money to their relatives, to their parents uh, using uh, letters. So they'd put money in the letter, you give the letter in an envelope to your cousin, you tell your cousin, send this to my, to my grandmother or to my mother. Ah. Oh, you know man. How, you know how our cousins are. The, 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 the <laughs> all the money didn't make it. <laughs> all the money didn't make it. So those are, those are tax, a cousin tax. So, uh, so, so basically when um, this system came on, on board, uh, it was a really disruptive system. And it, it only took about 10 years for, for the, er, virtually every single adult to be using M-Pesa. Right. I think I'm getting a lot of notifications for some reason. Let me see if I can turn them off. 
Yeah, I think people see that he's live on there with uh on the hanging with Big Mark show. <laughs> I think they're just hitting him up like, hey man, I see you live. So hopefully he can he can turn them off. Uh, let's see. Uh, notification. Yeah, the cousin tax. Hey, everybody knows that cousin tax is real. That's a real tax. <laughs> none of my cousins, though. If y'all watching this, I know none of y'all gonna take money out the envelope before it gets to to the grand folks. Man, I know y'all ain't gonna do that. <laughs> so yeah, while we wait for him, he's just trying to turn off his notifications because he's um people are notifying him quickly. Hey man, I see you live. They don't realize it's messing your live up. Dang, it took him completely off. So hopefully it can get back in. Let's see. So I'll pointing in. My special guest today is a good buddy of mine named John Wanana. Okay, I can't say the name. I'm gonna let him say his own name. Y'all know I don't do good with anybody's name. Um, John Wayana, Wainana. I know that part. Uh, Samson, John Wainana, Wainana Samson. Um, I thought he ran out of airtime. He didn't run out of airtime. Believe me, that dude is. He's good. <laughs> he's good. He's he's a very intelligent brother um, from Kenya. He's probably in Kenya right now. I think he was getting hit up. Um, but what we were talking about is M-Pesa. So he was explaining how M-Pesa works because earlier we were having a discussion about centralization and decentralization. And he was talking about m -Pesa. They used to send money in envelopes by way of their cousins from people in the city would send money out to the rural communities and that he had what he called a cousin tax because by the time the money got out to the <laughs> got out to the rural communities to their family the cousins had taken a little bit out of it you know it's the cousin tax so that's what we're talking about that's where we are um so hopefully he can hop, hop back in here i think he was just getting bombarded with notifications once he went live with us so hopefully he can get back in he might have to close his app down and do what he did before Hopefully he can jump back in here. Well, let's see. We'll see. There he is, my man. Yeah, sorry about that. The notifications are coming fast and thick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what happens. Every time people go live, it's like their friends go, oh, I see you live. And then they start calling them. And <laughs> so it happens every time, man. So, yeah, so yeah. we were, I, I was just bringing everybody up to speed when you were talking about as far as Impesa. So basically, Impesa is a, is a, I didn't realize it was six, it's 16 years old. That's crazy. Yes. yes. That's, and and we, we use it for everything. Yeah. Everybody in the country uses Impesa pretty much, right? Yes. Yes. All, all that, others. Here's the question. What is, your, what is your local currency called? So uh, it's called the Kenya shilling. Yep. And so yeah. no one, no one, people use in peso more than the shilling, don't they? No. Um, the funny thing is when you use in peso, you're actually using the Kenya shilling. So oh, it's one-to-one. -one. It's one-to-one, yeah. -one, correct. Yes. Yeah. So you, so the way, and just correct me if I'm wrong, the way you get in peso is either people send it to you or you go to like a phone store and give them money and they give you credits back. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And nowadays, um, you can pull money from your bank account into M-Pesa, which hmm. is quite strange because the banks were fighting M-Pesa for a long time. They were getting and now they, by M -Pesa. And now they, they no just have to go ahead. Yeah. Right. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Excuse me. That's awesome. So on the flip side of that, so talk about Bitcoin in terms of, like, tell the difference between M-Pesa and Bitcoin. I try to explain it. But some people don't want to listen to me because I'm not boots on the ground. As a matter of fact, where are you right now, John? Uh, right now, I'm at home in, in, in Kenya. No, what city are you in? In Nairobi. Nairobi. Nairobi city. So right now, John is boots on the ground right now in Nairobi, Kenya. And he's going to talk to you about the differences between m -Pesa and Bitcoin. I just want to make sure we set that up so people don't think I just got you from L.A. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, brother. Right. Right. So, so, um, so it, it's actually very interesting you asked that question because it's actually how I, I found out about uh, Bitcoin. Um, about in 2013, 
I was involved in a startup called CrowdPesa. Uh, CrowdPesa was trying to use M M-Pesa for commerce, for e-commerce and mobile commerce. So we were trying to build um, an application that allowed people to shop uh, online using M-Pesa. And um, the reason we couldn't, um, um, what happened is that startup eventually failed. And, and the reason it failed is because we couldn't get Safaricom or we couldn't get the mobile operator to give us access to an API to integrate uh, M-Pesa into our application. And, and an API is basically just some code set up where you can link up to your application and people are able to buy, um, to use that payment system to shop online. So it's, it's similar to like you shopping with, with your credit card on Amazon. Uh, so we were trying to do that now with the Mpesa. And right. we couldn't just get it done because the, the whole technology was proprietary. They hadn't yet developed a, a framework that people could use. So my, my co-founder and I eventually ended up going for a conference. Uh, it was called the Africa, Africa Conference in 2014. And that's when we had people talking about uh, Bitcoin. And when I saw Bitcoin, I was like, damn, I wish I knew about Bitcoin <laughs> before our startup shut down, before our startup right. closed. Right. We could have pivoted. So, um, so that's actually how I ended up on Bitcoin through the challenges I was having with M-Pesa. So M-Pesa is a great system within Kenya, uh, but it's, it, it wasn't a great system for going online or for doing, uh, you know, transactions that are international. And um, a, a lot of, uh, I mean, basically, most of Africa is blacklisted from, from online transactions. If you talk about Visa, if you talk about MasterCard, uh, people don't trust our, our debit cards. Uh, so, so these mobile money systems are, are quite, they're quite critical for, for, you know, for, for us because we don't have any other digital systems. So uh, Bitcoin, you know, as I'm sure everybody now knows is a um, decentralized uh, open platform. So you do not need permission to use Bitcoin. Anyone can set up a wallet. It takes about two minutes. Um, I mean, there's nowhere you sign up necessarily. You can, you can just download a native wallet um, and you can just buy Bitcoins from, from, from your friend or from you know, um, an exchange. And um, you, you, you store your Bitcoins in your own wallet and you have control over your, you know, your own money. So th that's a huge, a huge leap from even the best payment system in the world, which is M-Pesa. Because now you have in addition to having the ability to do that, you also have control over your own finances, uh, control your own wallets, um, and you, you can now, you know, just do basic transactions that um, you know you didn't be able to do so easily before. And uh, right. of course, more importantly uh, for us is you can now even begin to think of building global, or regional startups because you can have a product or a service that somebody likes somewhere else in the world and then now they have a way to pay you so that concept was very powerful for for us uh and um i think ever since then we've, we've just been involved in the bitcoin and blockchain space um you know trying to figure out how we can um, we can develop the platform and uh, create more opportunities for for people so M pesa really it's a great system um, it's downside, it's proprietary, um, you need permission from the telco, you need to have a company. A, a lot of young people don't have the money to set up a company, it's quite a bit expensive, so they can't, they can't even leverage M-Pesa as a platform to, to even test the idea. So I think that's the advantage that Bitcoin has, uh, hmm. and other cryptocurrencies have as well. We know right. It's an open platform for, for innovation. And that is the prime definition that I was talking about from a centralized platform to the decentralized platform. You all heard that they had to get permission to use the APIs to even tie into the Safaricom platform of m -Pesa. And that's what I was talking about earlier is that in a decentralized platform that is open source, that everybody has access to build their own things onto, 
There is no middleman that can tell you, no, you can't do it. Also, there are probably laws that are going on in Kenya to stop around money laundering and all kinds of other things that Safaricom has to adhere to from a regulatory standpoint that it actually stops some people from actually getting in the game, like you said, because they don't have companies. Now, I know one thing is when you were probably working on M-Pesa, the, the APIs weren't completely open. Now I know Safaricom realized that they needed to open up MP, uh, APIs, but they still are the ones that control that access, right? That's correct, yeah. So now they, have, they do have an API now but you need uh, to follow some uh, stringent rules and regulations uh, to sort of uh, use those APIs. And uh, what ends up happening is only, th only the well-funded uh, startups uh, are able to do so. So it creates sort of, um, I don't want to call it an unfair market, but it, it creates a market where you need a sufficient amount of, of capital to, to, you know, to do anything you know, uh, meaningful. Right. And that's what I was trying to tell Farouk earlier, but it's like, we weren't saying, because he thought we were saying there's only one way to do it. What we're saying is, is that decentralization tends to be the better way when it comes down to freedom and openness and being able to build on. And you're telling us from with boots on the ground in Kenya, in Nairobi right now, what time is it there, man? It's uh, 8.39. Okay, it ain't been yeah. bad. I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. it was. <laughs> I thought it was really bad, man. I thought it was really yeah. late over there, but that's cool. So you just, you just up watching like Blackish or something. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know what I'm watching, but I, I, I do have Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So that's the thing, man. Yeah. So I'm glad. Thank you so much for coming on. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Somebody said we need to add m to the uh, Forever Wallet. Now, we literally were talking about that. I was telling them maybe we can bring m into our into our wallet. Um, but let's see. Somebody said, why the distrust? Um, why the distrust? Well, I, th I think fundamentally um, they – from if you look at it from the the eyes of Safaricom is they don't want to risk getting in trouble by releasing their platform, uh, right? You know, to everyone just in case there's there are people who who uh, nefarious people who abuse the platform. So I think that's the excuse they would give you that that they're trying to de-risk uh, their business, uh, right? Which is a problem with centralization. And then, of course, uh, M-Pesa is proprietary technology. It's owned by Vodafone, which is a, a UK company. So even Safaricom have to go up to, to the UK, to the United Kingdom, and ask for permission on what they can do with the platform as well. So right. I think those are the two big reasons. Uh, the fact that they, they, they can't trust this. It's not a trustless platform like, like we call. Uh, they can't trust, you know, whoever is at the other end of the of the platform. And that's why right. the KYC. Yes. You can't use Ampesa if you don't have a national identity card. So that oh. also creates problems for So I can't use Mpesa? You can't use Mpesa. You need to be you need to be a registered um resident or citizen yeah. of Kenya to use uh Mpesa. So oh it's, it's man. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. See, that's the thing, though. It's like, so that keeps me out. So the Forever Wallet couldn't use M-Pesa unless we just had all the Kenyans who have Forever Wallets to use M-Pesa, right? Correct. Correct. And you need to set oh, up a man. Kenyan company to do that. Dang. But, I mean, that's not a bad thing. You over there. I might need to just come over and hang out with you for a couple of days, man. No problem. Yeah, all day. All day, right? Well, look, man, yeah. I appreciate you so much for doing this. Hopefully, Farouk gets around to watching it. Um, I tagged him in it because I wanted him to see, because he was saying he worked in iHub over there, and he was saying that M-Pesa is peer-to-peer. -peer. But I said, you may be able to send it to another person, but the ledger is still centralized, and the application itself is centralized because of who controls it and who controls access to it, right? Um, he was saying something about, and this is one thing I need to do more research on. He was saying something about the entire wallet is held on the SIM card. Is that how it works? 
Yes, that's correct. That's correct. But the service is on on servers, and sometimes those servers do go down. So yeah, you could have like uh, one or two days where nobody can transact and pesa because so the server is on the maintenance. So it's, it's still so it's peer to peer only when you when you're sending the the money. So yeah. you can send it from one person to another. But, but it's still going through the server to send, right? It's still a server system, yes. Yeah. So it's still client server. It's not, I can't just send money to you. Yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't just send money to you, period. It has to go through uh Safaricom servers and then come back to you, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was trying to discuss earlier. They said, is that safe? Um, I mean it's I'm sure, like yesterday, the CEO was on TV saying that um, they do get a lot of hack attacks. So, right. because of the server model, the client server model, uh, but he's talking about using blockchain to sort of expand the service. So, we will try and see how, how that goes. Yeah. Got you. So, he's that's crazy. So, he's getting into blockchain too. Even this centralized yeah. model that has worked for 16 years is still looking for ways to utilize the new technology to help decentralize a little bit of their service as well. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. So, J John, let me say it here. You say your name the way it should be said, exactly the way you would say it in Kenya. Uh, so, my, my full names are John Wainaina. Wainaina. Samson okay. Yes, Wainaina. Wainaina. Okay. John Wainaina Samson Karanja. Correct. Man, all right. Because you know, I, even when I meet, met you in person, I was still like, uh, John Wainaina. Okay, thank you. It yeah. says, love the fact yeah. that the jump in our exposure will coin it to so many diverse people and platforms. It says, Safaricom in the UK. Safaricom is owned by Vodafone, right? Is that correct? Yes, um, they own, I believe. Okay, now they recently did a deal with Vodacom, which they still own, but I think it's about 60% of the shares are owned by Vodafone. Got you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. somebody was asking that. Somebody was asking that. So Safaricom is owned by Vodafone, which is in the UK, Crystal Mendoza, which is in the UK. So, hey, man, John, my man, John Wainaina. Nice to see you again, my friend. I appreciate nice you. you. I appreciate you always. Um, and what yes. should I say? Um, Asante. Asante, is that right? Correct. Asante. Asante. I, Asante, I Asante to you, brother. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. And then we're going to have to have you back on again because people want to learn about lightning nodes. And I know you guys yeah. are over there killing it, setting up lightning nodes in Kenya. So we'll bring you on again and talk about lightning nodes, Doc. Thank you, man. All right. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Lamar. Have a good day. Yeah. Love you, brother. See you later. See you later. Koheri. Bye. <laughs> Live love. Live life. That was my man, John. Why not now? Samson Taranja from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I appreciate him so much. Have a meet, period, on the face of the planet. Most pleasant people. He got that million dollar smile. Dude is the, one of the coolest and smartest guys I know. So it's really good um, having those type of people in Wakanda. So if you if you want, spread this video around. Let everybody know about it. Um, thank y'all. I appreciate you guys. Live love. Love life.